Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki Manager 6 as part of the Ottawa Senators. So as I mentioned at the at the end of the last episode, uh, this probably is going to be a little bit of a shorter video, uh, mainly because the month of February in 1998 in real life had the Winter Olympics in Nagano. Uh, of course, that's not in the game here, so there's like that giant hole in the schedule where there's not going to be any activity. Uh, so that's probably going to go by fairly fast. Uh, only a handful of games ready to be played, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and go through them. Uh, there are a couple things that I need to bring up though before we get started. Uh, so if you look, uh, if you're looking at your screen right now and you look at the bottom, I've d I did a couple things. Uh, and there's a few things that I really need to address. So first off, you can see I've put Benoit Brunet on waivers. He is not doing much of anything. He has a whopping two goals this year, uh, 14 points in 49 games. The reason that I'm sending him down mostly is because I am recalling Marianosa. Uh, I want to recall Marianosa because it's Marianosa. Um, and I want for him to play, but there's also uh, something uh, really bad and sad that's going on right now. Uh, I've been very vocal about how much I like Marianosa and that I, he was going to be a senator for life. Well, prior to shooting the video, I went through my expiring contracts uh, to start making offers. As you can see, there's offers uh, there on the left. So I made offers to Sillinger, Kelly Owenson, Brian McKay, Magnus Arvidsson, Thomas Holmstrom, Vili Peltanen, and Roman Hammerlich. So all of those guys I'm trying to bring back at various price tags and contract length and whatnot. Uh, you can see I don't have Marianosa in there. And the reason is that he is so upset at the organization that he is refusing to negotiate a contract. So what I did is that I called him up, hopefully playing in the NHL is going to change his mood. Uh, but if by the start of March uh, his mood has not changed, I'm probably going to be forced to uh, trade him. I don't want to lose him for nothing. That would be a little ridiculous. Uh, so I might have to trade Marianosa. That's going to make me really sad if that happens. <laughs> so the one player that I mentioned that I was going to keep for uh, you know forever on the sands is not wanting to negotiate with me. My computer hates me, I guess. So a um, couple other things too, uh, or rather a couple other players as well. Uh, that are not receiving an offer right now. Um, one of them is Zardy Zalapski. Uh, he's starting to decline in ability. He's only a star and a half now. Uh, kind of declining also in uh, you know in points and everything. Uh, he's in the minuses. So I might be able to find better either within my organization. I do have Sammy Salo and Sheldon Surrey in the miners so one of them could slide in so Zardy Zalepski not getting extended uh, he was very useful for us remember we traded Pavel Dimitrov from so he was really useful for us to help solidify our defense when you know we had half star players playing uh, but I think it's going to be time to part ways with Zardy Zalepski I am keeping uh, Kelly Johansson he's 30 he asked for only three years and he's still two and a half stars so still pretty serviceable uh, looks like he's still going to be around 40 points which is plenty good for me for a defenseman Another guy that I did not uh, send an extension for and that I, as soon as I'm done, you know, talking, I'm going to see if I can get anything for him is Radic Bank. And the reason is, as you can see, his potential dipped. He's only a, a star and a half player. He has not been developing very well. Radic Bank in real life was a serviceable player. And just a star and a half is probably not going to cut it for me. So I'm going to try to trade him. And I am going to attempt to do the same thing, but I will wait on... So Radek Bank, I'm going to try right now. Um, and the other one is Ron Ekstall. Uh, Ron Ekstall has a good save percentage. Well, decent save percentage, but he's not winning much. 
he's getting old and he wants a lot of money. Uh, so I am going to attempt to trade him, but I'm going to wait until March. I'm going to uh, get a few more games out of him in February before I attempt to trade him. So if I don't, with all of the trades I'm going to attempt and everything, if I do not get a goaltender, uh, I am not going to... Uh, I mean, I am going to be going with Gieber and Damien Rhodes. That is not that great of a tandem, uh, but I have to do with what I have. Curtis Joseph is not on the block anymore, uh, or else I probably would have tried to trade Marianosa for Curtis Joseph or something. So, yeah, the best player on the block right now is on injured reserve, and that's Sean McEckern. So I guess I could try to trade Norm McIver for him to repeat uh, the trade that happened in real life. Uh, although I, I'm pretty sure that was a few years earlier that that happened. So that's pretty much what we're sitting right now. So Marianoso is mad at me, so I'm trying to make him happy by bringing him to the NHL. His little face, uh, mood face here changed. Uh, he was like a sad face to a happy face. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens with that. Um, definitely I'm going to be crushed if I have to trade also. So that's pretty much where we're at. Um, so all of those guys are probably going to accept the offer to extend. Uh, that's something that I probably would like the company to change, is that uh, whenever you have players that are on expiring contracts and that you attempt to sign them during the season, before the season ends, they always, always, always agree to sign. Not at any price, but if you just match what they want, they will always say yes. So... Unless, of course, that they are so mad at you that they don't even want to negotiate. So that's the only caveat to that. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I didn't put anybody on uh, new on the trading block or anything like that because I kind of have the, my plan going here. So let's go ahead and see what we can get for Reddick Bank. So we're going to go ahead and shop player. Yes, I'm sure I want to shop Reddick Bank. All right, I got a bunch of offers. So let's take a look. Montreal is offering me... Oh, Jonas Bergquist. Yeah, I'm going to say no to that. Jonas played for me before. I, I'm okay with him not playing for me anymore. Uh, Toronto's offering me Jeff Farkas. Yeah, probably not. No. The Blackhawks are for offering me Brian Felsner. We're gonna say no to that. Surely I can get, you know, something decent. BJ Young. Rangers offer Petro Koivunen. No. Wow. I'll be honest, I've seen some names I've ever I've never heard of before, and I know my hockey pretty good. Oh, the Kings are offering me Trentiani. Uh, no. Uh, Sergei Gusev. Uh, maybe if he gets to develop. Okay, I'm going to keep that one on the back burner just in case. that There's absolutely nothing else better that's offered to me. Flyers are offering me tr uh, an aging Troy Loney. I'm going to say no. Pittsburgh is offering me Robert Dome. Yeah, no. Of course, I'm not expecting to, you know, have Jagger offered to me or anything, but uh, I was expecting a slightly better quality of players. Daryl Laplante for Radic Bank. We're going to say no to that. Oops, I didn't even say no. I just deleted the email. Not even worthy of a response. Uh, Sabres. Oh, Greg DeVries. Okay, maybe. Greg DeVries did play for the for the Sens for a little bit. So maybe. He's not developed, so he's still an alpha star. And he's 25. Well, that's better than some of the offer, other offers I've seen. Trade proposal from the Calgary Flames. Jeff Odgers. Yeah, I'm good.
Met her. Nope. Order is offering me Mike what? I'm good. Thank you. Nicholas Nordgren from Carolina. Yeah, I don't think so. David Gusley. Nope. Richard Lintner. Lintner was supposed to become a decent player and he never really quite did anything. Like nobody nobody touted him to be a superstar or anything, but I remember that he was supposed to have a certain potential and it never quite materialized. Perry Berezan, yeah, he's getting old, not interested. Xavier Delille not gonna do that. Anti Alto. No, I'm good. And Jason Padalen. No. Alright, so I'm either sending him to Buffalo or to Dallas. Gusev is younger, so he has a better chance to develop his potential. Greg DeVries, he's a little bit more of a defensive type of defenseman. Gusev. Gusev as well, I believe. Oh, decisions. I think I'm gonna go with Gusev. Uh, first of all, he's younger, and second of all, I'm shipping Bunk in the West, so he's not gonna come back to haunt me in case that he has a late development uh, burst or something like that. So, all right. So we have traded Radic Bunk. I can't believe I did that. All right. So Sergey Gusev for Radic Bunk. Now stay tuned for next month, we're doing the same with Ronix, so hopefully I'm going to be able to fetch something from him. And that means that I'm going to bring back Benoit Bougounet, I suppose. Oh, I can't, he's kind of uh, in limbo right now. Uh, maybe I'm going to give Yakmanev a shot instead. Or, or Todd Warner. Yeah, let's try let's try Todd Warner. He can't be worse than Bugunet. Bugunet was awful. Alright, let's do this. Alright, so we traded Radic Bonk. Sad sad time when one of your prospects doesn't quite pan out. I will say though that uh, in general Generally speaking, uh, the Sens did pretty good lately in real life with drafting and everything. Um, that's at least one thing the Sens are doing pretty good, I believe. So, of course, there's there's been misses. There's you know, no no drafting department in the NHL is perfect, but uh, I think overall we've been we've been doing pretty good to uh, especially in the later rounds to get some uh, nice little players. But anyway, so let's go ahead and advance this. All right, so I have a lot of emails because I have um, all of my players have said that they wanted to stay uh, with me. Alright, so team is in outstanding shape. Uh, he is only happy with my work, not very happy. We had a four, six, and three months. So as we know, we kind of dropped a little bit uh, as far as the record goes in December, uh, January. Sorry. So yeah. Roman Hammerlick signs contract. Thank you. Magnus Arvidsson signed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, there's a player on the Islanders that wrecked a car. Pierre Turgeon. Pierre, Pierre, Pierre. You have to be careful. 
All right, so Todd Warner wants number eight. It's technically retired, but uh, I guess you can have it. All right, we are playing the Devils' first game in February. Um, Devils are doing really well for themselves. They are first in the East with a record of 31, 14, and 8. One of those 14 losses came against us, uh, where we beat them 2-0 uh, back at home. And we are playing at home again. So we have a home and home against the Devils to open the month of February. So it's not going to be easy. All right. So they are going with Martin Brother. We are going with Gibert. And I am going to sim this game. And we lost 5 to 3. So we lost against the best team in the East. Nothing to be ashamed of, but I need victories. We did outshoot them 31 29, so we beat the trap. Devils were known for the trap at the end of the 90s and start of the 2000s. So, Peter Sikoro was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Bill Guerin, now playing for us against his former team, was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Bobby Olick, third star with a goal and an assist as well. Uh, we only drew 7,684 people in the stands. Alright, so we scored all of our goals in the second period. So V. Peltonen scored on the power play from Matt Cullen, Bill Guerin from Roman Amerik, and Robert Zvela from Alexei Yashin and Bill Guerin. Alright. Oh, Roger Nielsen is angry at uh, the local media. So Roger Nielsen, we've been losing a couple games in a row here, so the media has not been very nice to us. So probably Bruce Garriach and uh, maybe Ian Mendes or something that are not uh, too happy with us. So, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to do that I kind of forgot to do. I'm going to put Zardy Zalepski on the trading blocks, and since I am not going to extend him, I would like to not lose him for nothing at the end of the season. So throughout the month, I might be getting offers for him. If not, just like Extol, at the start of March, I'm going to be shopping him and see what I can get for Zardy Zalepski. Jeff Cortnall has played in a thousand games. He was held scoreless, though, but uh, played his thousand game against Colorado. All right, so those players are getting used to the team. Darren David Oliver is uh, available. I am not going to pick him up, but he is available on the waivers. Phil Owsley extends his assist streak to eight games. He had two assists against the Blackhawks. Pretty good game for Phil Owsley. All right. Oh, and there's been a trade between the Panthers and the Mighty Ducks. So two recent teams added to the league are trading. So Florida sent Rich Pilon and Nick Smith to Anaheim for Gart Snow and Mike Minard. So Anaheim had picked up Gart Snow on the waivers just last month, I believe, or the month before. Uh, and now they traded Gart Snow over to Florida and got some help. Uh, wow, Rich Pilon, you, you, need to, uh, you need to give up your old jerseys there. Uh, still wearing a Flames jersey, even though he was playing for a couple previous teams other teams so so and I'm uh, uh, I mean Florida gets a couple goaltenders Nick Smith is probably not gonna become much of anything Rich Pilon is you know kind of a guy that takes a lot of penalties apparently 273 minutes so that's pretty much how he was in real life too I believe I kind of remember him as being a tough defenseman. I don't know that he was racking up penalty minutes to that rate, but he was a kind of a tough defenseman. So, all right. Not a trade that's going to go down as the biggest trade in history for sure. 
All right, now we are playing on the road against the same devils that just beat us five to three. So hopefully we can beat them this time. It's gonna be tough, and it's gonna be tough if we start the month with two losses. All right, so it's brother and Eber in net again. So let's go. Oh, we won that one. Awesome. One on the road for the three. Nice road win, guys. I'm really happy about that. I'm not happy that we got outshot 44 to 20, but uh, I'll take the W. Oh, the, the Devils gave the puck away a lot more than we did. So maybe that's uh, that played in the balance there. So, oh, Bill Guerin likes to play against his former team. First star, hat trick, three goals. Uh, Patrick Eliash for... New Jersey was a second star with an assist, and Mike Salinger, third star with two assists. So Bill Guerin tore a new one to his former team. They tried to trade him, and then they didn't, they didn't resign him. So he's like, all right, I'm going to score goals against you guys. So Guerin from Kelly Johansson and Daniel Alfredson. Uh, Guerin again from Todd Warner and Mike Salinger. Bill Guerin again from Salinger and Roman Amardic and Vili Peltonen from Alexei Yashin. All right, good game. That's a pretty good game. Yes, big game for Bill Guerin. That's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Pretty happy with that result. And now we are playing at home against the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right. Uh, Steve Kanawalchuk is back from suspension in Buffalo. Uh, good game for Mikhail Renberg in Philly. He had a hat-trick, three goals. And René Corbett's uh, suspension ends in Dallas. Back to the lineup. All right, so... We are playing Toronto. Uh, they are struggling a little. They are 20, 26, and 7. Uh, and we played one game in Toronto against them so far. And it was a tie. 3-3. Three, three. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's been a while since we've played them. So let's take a look. Alright, so Fuhr and Riendo in net. Uh, Matt Vichuk. Oh yeah, I remember that uh, Wendell Clark came unfit to uh, to play. Wow, he's been unfit all season at this point. Maybe it just doesn't go away, I don't know. Pretty sure that in previous versions of the game, after a couple months that was going away, or maybe he's just, you know, still stuffing himself with hot dogs, I don't know. Alright, so... Yeah, I remember I, I made the mention that they have a team that's about similar in strength to ours, which I still believe is true, so... Alright. <clears throat> Let's get a win. At home against the Leafs, we can win this. We are going with Ronixal, they are going with Grant Fior. Oh boy. <clears throat> so we lost 3 nothing. Not good. Shots were 21 apiece. Uh, was a very tight game, I guess. We gave the puck too much. 10 giveaways to 6 for them. Uh, Martin Gilino was the first star for the Leafs. Two goals. Second star, Frederick Modine with a goal. And third star, Alex X with an assist. All right, Phil Owsley extends his assist streak to nine games. He had an assist against the Flyers. Pretty good. Tampa Bay's Damon Lankow is suspended uh, for five games. Oh, Mario Lemieux signed a, an extension in Pittsburgh, so he's going to be there for five more years. So he is going to make $2.15 million a year for five years. And Pittsburgh, at the same time, is trying to reinstate the team Kangaroo Court. And Larry Murphy will catch a young player in just a few. And we are about to play Pittsburgh right before the long break. It's going to be tough. <coughs> yep, 
Yarmir Jagger extends his goal streak to five games with a goal against Buffalo. All right, and Ed Belfour signed an extension with Chicago, uh, four years at two point seven eight million a year. All right, so let's play that game against Pittsburgh. We are one and one against Pittsburgh. Uh, we won at home for the three. We lost in Pittsburgh for the three. We are now playing at home. Pittsburgh is now 31, 21, and five, and they are third in the East. We are still holding on to the eighth spot, but not by much. So a win is kind of mandatory here. All right, so we are going with Gieber. They are going with Peter Scudra. Looks like Scudra took the starting job from Tom Barrasso. He played in 31 games. Ooh, nice win against a pretty good team. So we just beat Pittsburgh 6-1. to one. That's pretty good. Uh, we outshot them 31 to 27. So we we've been keeping the shots down for a couple games in a row now. Maybe Roger Nielsen finally decided to uh, put a defensive system in there. Uh, we did give the puck away too much, so 10 to 6 in that department. Uh, we had 8,661 people in the stands. Still not cracking 10,000, even with Mario Lemieux in uh, in town. So the first start of the game was really Peltonen with two assists. Amerlik had two assists as well, and Mike Sillinger was the third star with a goal and an assist. So six goals to look at. That's pretty good. So Zvela scored from Dackel and Kelly Johansson. Sillinger scored short-handed. That's pretty good. Uh, from Brian McCabe and Roman Amerlik. Zardy Zalapski scored from Amerlik and Loney Loach. And then Daniel Alfredson from Pear Juice and V. Peltonen. Bill Guerin scored his 22nd from Mike Salinger and Robert Zwell. And finally, Alexei Yashin scored his 28th from V. Peltonen. So Peltonen starting to uh, play better. I like that. He's usually on my first line, so I like that he's uh, playing better. All right, so Sandis Ozolinch, who is now in Boston, uh, extended his goal streak to five games. So against Carolina, he actually had two goals and two assists in that game. Pretty good game for Ozolinch. Doug Brown is back from suspension in New Jersey. He's going to be back in the lineup. Uh, Chris King with the Rangers was suspended. That's not the first time, so this time he's getting nine games. Ooh, T. Mussolini was suspended as well. He's going to miss five games. Uh, Phil Ousley extends his assist streak to ten games. He had three assists against the Rangers. Pretty good. All right, so now we are not playing for 17 days until we hit the road to play. Uh, that's the Canadian Western trip that's coming. So we're going to be playing in Edmonton and Vancouver, and then on March 1st uh, in Calgary. So um, we're only going to be playing the first two games of the Western Canadian trip uh, for today. Uh, so let's start simming. Uh, Trades are probably so possible during the uh, the Olympic break and everything, um, and <clears throat> I guess for teams that have injuries, well, their players get to rest, so that's pretty good for them. All right, nothing happened there. Oh. Well, Richard Park is a little funny because he stepped on the logo when people are off, you know, to go to the Olympics and everything. So I guess Larry Murphy was just uh, waiting in a closet or something in case somebody came to the, the arena while everybody's off and everything. And then Richard Park was just there, not 
not giving two uh, fudge sickles about it and just stepped on the logo and Larry Murphy just came out of the closet and ha ha, I, I knew I would catch somebody. Eventually, I've been here for two days, I'm hungry. Oh boy, all right. Ooh, all right, so uh, Mike Modano agrees to extension with Dallas, so that makes uh, total sense that he extended him. So five years for a total of 10.850, so what, 2.1 something, 2.2, no, not 2.2, 2.1 something probably a year uh, for Modano for five years. That's pretty good. Uh, Sylvain Lefebvre helped a friend moving while everybody's at the Olympics. I don't think Sylvain Lefebvre would have made the lineup for Team Canada anyway. So he helped a friend move and hurt himself. All right, scouting reports. We'll not look at that. Uh, Steve Eiserman signed an extension with Detroit. He signed uh... okay. So it's 2.81 million a year for a total of 14 million. So that's what, six years? Yeah, I believe that would be a six year contract. It doesn't seem there how long the contract extension is for, but uh, with uh, very uh, shady math done in my head, I believe that would be a six year contract. Uh, Alexander Mogilny donates time and money to cancer research. I guess he did it from Japan because I'm pretty sure that Mogilny would have been at the Olympics. Alright, in nine days we are resuming activities. Oh, Trilone has been put on waivers. Alright, not really caring about the scouting reports. By now you know my philosophy about that. It's kind of needed because players in my universe might not develop at the same rate they did in real life, so that gives me kind of an idea. But uh, as far as knowing the players, I my knowledge of Aki should uh, prevail, hopefully, maybe. All right, we are resuming in five days. Oh, well, we want some, and uh, we have distanced ourselves to the Rangers, so, uh, who are in ninth position, now we're seventh. I just noticed that we have a nine-point lead now, so we can breathe a little better, um, but uh, nothing is a given, obviously. Uh, we are one long losing streak away from losing it all, so we need to hold on to that, and of course, if I trade Extal, that things might get worse I'm a little bit worried about that but I also don't want to lose him for nothing so sometimes it's tough being a GM I mean yeah, I'm not even doing it for in real life I'm just sitting in a chair here doing it and I I can feel the pressure uh, all right David Oliver and Igor Shibarev are available on the waivers and I am not going to pick them up All right, so we are finally back from the Olympics. Uh, I don't know who won the Olympics. Probably Canada. I mean, I don't mean to sound, you know, cocky or anything, but especially back in the, in those years, 
uh, Canada probably had a huge advantage over most of the other teams. Uh, things have really changed since then. Uh, a lot of countries have really upped it. Uh, but I would believe that in 1998, Canada probably would have won in my universe. Just saying. All right, we are coming back from the Olympic break. We are in Edmonton. It's cold. It's the end of February. It's like minus 31 Celsius outside. Uh, our breath uh, freezes in our beard while we breathe. Uh, fun stuff. So Edmonton is 20, 29 and 8, so they are struggling. Uh, but we did lose at home against them 4 to 1 earlier this year. Now we are going to play over there and hopefully we can win. Let's separate ourselves further from the bottom of the standings. Alright, so we are going with Gebert, they are going with Roman Turek. And we lost again, so Edmonton, uh, Edmonton struggles this year, and we lose both games against them this year. Not good. We lost 4-3. Oh god, and we currently outshot them 48-23 to 23 as well, so this one's probably on the goaltender at this point. Uh, we only had 4 giveaways, so that's not bad at all. They had 5, so that was not... Giveaways was not a reason why this game was lost or anything like that. Uh, Miroslav Shatan was the first star of the game, he had two assists, Brian McKay for us had two assists as well, he was the second star, and Ladislav Benisek, third star with a goal. So Daniel Alfredson scored on the power play, it was his 20th of the season, from Zvela and Yashin, Amardik scored shorthanded from Brian McKay and Andreas Dackel. And finally, Loney Loach scored from Brian McCabe, and that was only the third goal of the season for Loney Loach. It looks like he is uh, slowing down. He's been a pretty steady, decent player for us for many years. Uh, I gave him a much longer career than he had in real life, uh, but it might be time to part ways with Loney Loach soon. Phil Ausley extends his assist streak to 11 games with a goal and an assist uh, against Colorado. So Phil Ausley is on a tier. What kind of season is he having? Oh yeah, he's a point per game. That's pretty good. 55 points in 50, 55 games. Ausley was a pretty good defenseman. And that's fine. Oh. Dressing room shenanigans make us New Jersey players. So teammates Peter Sikora and Sammy Kapanen are in hot water with head coach Herb Brooks for a series of pranks aimed at other teammates. All right. I guess when you're first uh, in the East, you can't afford to do stuff like that. All right. So in two days, we're going to be playing in Vancouver, and it is going to be the last game of this month. Phil Ausley's assist streak ended at 11 games. He was held scoreless against Colorado. Looks like they had a home and home with Colorado there. Uh, Mark Messier scored his 600th goal of his career. He had a goal and two assists against Toronto. Uh, he's still pretty good. Uh, he's 37 and he's still pretty close to a point per game. 50 points in 58 games. So, still giving it. All right, Paul Ranheim suspensions end in Calgary. He is back in the lineup. And we are now playing in Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver has a pretty good record of 32, 21, and 6. If I, be if I remember correctly, I believe they were second in the or third in the West uh, at the end of last month. Uh, we have not played them so far this year, so we're going to take a look at their, uh, at their lineup here. All right, so Kirk McLean is starting to uh, not be as dominant anymore. He's a star and a half. Uh, you wouldn't believe it by looking at his stats, though. He has pretty good stats. And then uh, Dieter Kokan Koshan is the backup. 
Yerky Lume, Chris McAlpine, Matthias Olun, Francis Acusera, Denis Vesky, Brent Sopel on D, Greg Adams and Barry, Jeff Corkno, Robert Crumb, Japan Dolfo, Tormena. Oh, Tormena is in Vancouver now. How is he doing? I think he's not doing much of anything. Uh, Peter Schaefer, who played for Ottawa briefly. Lyndon Nedved, Pekka running, Dave Scatcher. So, pretty good centers. I, I think they have a pretty good team. They also have a pretty good record, so I guess that makes sense. Um, they have a good young up-and-coming Matthias Olund. So... Yeah, I would say they are doing pretty good here. It's not going to be an easy game. And we need wins. Alright, so we're going with Gieber and they are going with uh, the backup. Uh, Koshan, Kokan, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I am not super... I remember like seeing that name, but I don't remember hearing it. So I'm not sure how to pronounce it at this point. So, And we lost 2-1, so that's not good. We had a bad month of February overall. We didn't do all that great. Um, that might come to bite us. We're still four games under 500. That's not good. Not one bit. All right, so they outshot us 46 to 38. So I guess the goaltender is had a pretty good game because it's a two to one game, and you know that's a lot of shots on goal. Uh, oh, we couldn't capitalize on all of those uh, giveaways that Vancouver had. They gave the puck away 11 times to, f and we did it five times. So, Guillebert was the first star of the game despite the loss. Uh, 44 save uh, performance. Norm McIver was the second star with a goal. And their backup was the third star with 37 saves. So, Pavel Bury scored his 40th of the season and 41st, so he had two goals. Uh, and then Norm McIver scored for us, assisted by Alexi Yashin. All right, and apparently we got Brian McCabe that got hurt in the last game. He's going to miss a few games, or a few days at least. Uh, so, Johan Garpenlove in Phoenix is suspended. He's going to miss five games. I believe that's the second time he's suspended. Uh, okay. All right, so all right, and Sandis Ozelinch and Mike Dunham, both in Boston, are the players of the month. So they had the best month of February there. Okay, McCabe is able to play art and. Uh, even if he isn't, I have a, a backup for a D there. So we didn't do very good. Uh, so now Carolina passed us. So we were seventh for a while. Now we're back to eight um, with 56 points. Uh, looks like there's a little bit more of a distance now. So sixth place looks a little bit uh, more difficult to achieve. We're five points back on the sixth, but we also are five points ahead of the ninth. So we need a decent month in March. We need to do better. Um, I see some winning, winnable games there. So again, I'm not a big fan of that term, but. Um, I do see some games that we should be able to win in there, uh, teams that are under us in the standings, so we sh we have to win those games. We have to win the games against Calgary, Florida, Washington, and the Rangers, and Anaheim. We should be able to win those games. We have to. Uh, if we can get a pretty good month of March, we might really solidify our spot in the, for the playoffs. So let's take a look in the West, see how it looks over there. All right, so yeah, Vancouver is second in the West uh, because of the 
division they're playing in. Uh, Phoenix has more points, but okay. So the Kings are holding on there. Now the all the Canadian teams aside from Vancouver are all like right there, real close to a playoff spot. So yeah, it looks looks like the top seven in the West is pretty much decided. I mean that's a lot of points to make up 12 points back that's a lot of points to make up so it looks like the you know the top seven is pretty much decided uh, of course the order might change because there's a lot of you know it's really tight there but there's a big drop off between seven and eight and then for the eight spot there's quite a few teams that dallas is basically battling with you know the remaining canadian teams there so yeah that's gonna be a uh, a big battle there. I'm gonna take a look at our stats real quick. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to look at. Alright, so we have Yeshin who is now a point per game. He was slightly above that. Now he's exactly at a point per game. He has 58 points in 58 games. Daniel Alfredson has 39 points in 59 games. McIver is still kicking 37 in 53. Uh, then it starts to drop off quite a bit. Bill Guerin scoring goals but not getting many assists. 22 goals uh, for him in 60 games. So that part is pretty good, but he only has 10 assists. So uh, Kelly Awansan is a whopping plus 24, and he's like a real big outlier. That's the only time that I pay attention to the plus minus stats, uh, especially in you know 2020 uh, is when you have a huge outlier like that so so maybe that uh, resigning Kelly Johansson was not a bad idea after all only have one power play point though but uh, we're gonna need his leadership and experience on the team uh, let's take a look. Again, there weren't a whole lot of games played in February. Uh, Pavel Bury is still first for the goals with 30, 41 goals on the season. Timu Selani, 57 assists, is still the best passer. And Iserman is now the best scorer in the league with 91 points. Selani has 88. So we're still going to see a few 100-point players. Uh... All right, so we are going to go ahead and call this a video. I'm gonna go ahead and save. So the video is a little bit shorter than usual, not by that much. Uh, turns out that uh, I had a lot to say at the start, I guess. So uh, as usual, thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you've liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And until I roll this game again, see you guys next time. Thank you.